Good morning. So we'll start with the meditation uh, um, by uh, Robert Goddard. And the years forever fashion new dreams when old ones go. God pity the one dream man. And uh, let me read that again. It's a good one. The years forever fashion new dreams when old ones go. God pity the one dream man. And, uh, you know, someone wise told me once that, uh, that in your life, you actually have, uh, three different lives, you know, three different, uh, uh, segments of your life, um, based on the decisions that you make and real decisions, not about, uh, uh, you know, what you're going to eat for breakfast, but the real decisions about, uh, uh, um, what is going to make you as an individual. And for many of us, what we do is we, you know, we get married, we have kids, you know, or we go to school or we, we have a trajectory, but those don't, aren't necessarily the major decisions. Look back over your life and, uh, or your, or where you are in your life right now and ask yourself, uh, what are the major, uh, uh, decisions that you've made that have sent you, uh, um, uh, on, on the path, uh, that you're on. And you can probably easily identify one or two or even three decisions that you've made uh, um, that have really uh, made you who you are as a human being. And to me, that's what those dreams are, is, is that you have a dream, you have a vision, you have a, an idea, a dream, a, a thought that you are going on some direction and you make a decision based on that thought, dream or, or inspiration that you had at the moment and it sends your life on a trajectory. And, uh, um, you know, aren't we lucky that we have uh, dreams that do change? It's just, uh, you know, what he's pointing out is that you have just one dream. You just uh, sit on one idea your whole life. Uh, that's not necessarily uh, uh, the way the way it uh, uh, ought to be, you know. And uh, so may we continue dreaming and may we kind of uh, find uh, uh, what our dream is today, what our what our passion, what is inspired in us, meaning an inspire, of course, comes from spirit, it comes from breathing in new air. And may we be inspired today to, to breathe in new air, you know, as a metaphor, uh, to inspire ourselves to to really have a new dream, a new, a new way of uh, uh, experiencing uh, how we want to move forward. So we're still in the mission as we're still in the uh, uh, um, uh, pure vote. Let me find out where we are. And um, we are in chapter four, um, you know, and we, we're, we're, we're starting to, we're over halfway through, but uh, uh, what's really uh, important for us to remember is how they all kind of weave together. So you can uh, um, really pick up anywhere and uh, not only gain wisdom, but you can see how they, uh, each mission or each uh, piece of wisdom that we're looking at uh, um, kind of reflects the one before, but also it reflects upon, uh, um, you know, a, a, a Mishnah later on. So here we go. Uh, in chapter four, uh, um, we were talking about, uh, uh, um, you know, how, how our behaviors are when we interact, right? So that uh, you, you don't want to make... Uh, uh, interact with other people, right? You don't want to appease your fellow in the time of their anger. Remember, we talked a little bit about this. So um, we are now moving on to, uh, um, oh, and then we started talking about Torah. I know it's been a couple of days. So we started talking about when and how we engage in, in our learning and our spiritual endeavors. Um, so here we go. Uh, Rabbi Meir, this is where we are. Um, so we're on Mishnah 27, chapter four, or chapter, uh, chapter four, and Rabbi Meir, and he, Rabbi Meir is one of the great rabbis. Uh, uh, many of the, the, the Jewish, uh, Jewish law, but certainly uh, uh, great Jewish thought comes from Rabbi Meir. We can get into all of these, uh, uh, maybe, uh, the, the, the different rabbis at a different time. But uh, here we go. What does he say? Rabbi Meir Omer, Altistikel Bakankan. So do not, this is a very famous one. Uh, do not look at the vessel. And of course, this is going to be a metaphor. Uh, the vessel meaning don't look at the person on the outside, but what is in it. There is a new vessel filled with old wine and an old vessel does not, that does not even contain new wine. And, um, you know, this is the, the Mishnah, uh, um, do not in, in short, um, base 
your 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 conclusions on other people based on their age. Um, you could have somebody who looks very young, uh, but uh, has a lot of wisdom in them, and you could see somebody who is older in years, advanced in years, and uh, here it, it uses the idea that they don't even contain uh, uh, new wine, meaning that they don't have they don't have wisdom. Uh, but I'll take this one step further. Uh, let me read it again so you see the metaphor. Do not look at the vessel, but what is in it. Don't look at the vessel, but what's inside of it. What is it that motivates people? What is it that uh, the person does, their actions? We can't judge a book by its cover is, is more of a modern way to say that. There is a new vessel filled with old wine and an old vessel that does not even contain new wine. So let's just break this down a little bit also in the idea of uh, how we make judgments judgments based on appearance, uh, based on our own uh, uh, filters, our own eyes, our own experiences, that we look at something and it's very hard not to uh, make judgments, uh, have, uh, construe uh, uh, or make up opinions. And uh, so do not look at the vessel, but what is in it. Don't look at the outside, but what that person does. What are their actions? What are they uh, uh, doing? Um, how is it that they behave? What is it that they are? How do they interact with other people? Uh, and certainly uh, um, the wisdom in which they live. And remember, wisdom should dictate our behavior. Uh, it shouldn't just be things that we say. We're not doing this again. We don't do these readings just for our own uh, uh, for our own fun, this should be something that inspires us. Again, back to the ins inspiration, that this should be something that brings us to action. It's a call to action. Okay, so uh, there is a new vessel with old wine. Uh, so a new vessel, meaning a young person or somebody that looks as though uh, um, they may not uh, have what it is that you are, are looking for. Um, again, we have to be very, very careful about our judgment. When we, when we make judgments, our opinions, we are limited by our experiences, by how we filter it through our own life experiences. Uh, so it's very, very hard at times not to. I don't. I'm not even sure how one distinguishes between uh, um, what uh, um, you know that that we, your experience. We just bring that to the table all the time, and uh, um, that's just a common uh, human characteristic. But here, the warning is is that a, a new vessel so a young person might be filled with old wine, meaning wine here is a, a prob most most uh, uh, probably a, a metaphor for you know Torah learning wisdom, something sweet, something uh, uh, that brings wine is uh, uh, what does it bring? It brings joy, but it also brings uh, uh, an elevation. So uh, with old wine, meaning old wine is, is you know, I'm not a, I'm a connoisseur, but we, we all are aware of that the, the old wine, it, it, as it ripens, as it ages, it becomes better. And then there is an old vessel, meaning someone that, that you would assume is uh, capable uh, of doing something just because they are advanced in years, but that doesn't even can contain new wine, that there's nothing in it. It's not even new wine. It's not even that they have wine, that there, there, may, there, there may not be anything in it. And uh, so we ultimately say don't judge a book by its cover, but it's, it's, more, it's, it's, it's even more layered than that. Uh, um, we have to look at what's inside. Uh, um, that when you say don't judge a book by its cover, it would take it one, but make sure you read the book. Uh, um, you know, people don't necessarily say that, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, get into the book and understand what's in the book. Uh, because, you know, certainly we do make judgments, but you have to really take in what's inside and uh, what's inside. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. Rabbi Elazar uh, Hakapar Omer, um, jealousy, okay, uh, Hakina, okay, lust and glory remove a person from the world. Um, so what... So the, the flip side of it is what connects you, uh, um, right? So love and compassion and, and what unites us, what brings us together, spirituality. I mean, make your list of what brings you uh, um, together, what brings people together, what creates a community, what creates uh, better communication, what brings together, what bonds people together, you know? And as I'm thinking of that, uh, um, here, uh, Rebbe Eliezer Hakapar says, you know, what, what 
breaks and you can maybe what breaks a community he's giving us three examples jealousy uh when we are looking at what others are doing when we are uh concerned uh about what other people's what other people have what they're doing what they're saying when we are looking at others as somehow a a, a commentary on us or the other ways is that you're, you're, you're judging your insides based on other people's outsides. You know, that's, that's a really interesting thing is that we, we internalize what we perceive other people to be doing. Uh, again, we judge our insides based on other people's outsides. And, uh, uh, um, this this idea of somehow you know look in, in this age of uh, of uh, you know uh, social media it's very easy to see what other people are doing but we all know very quickly that that's never the real picture uh, uh, what we see online and what we see uh, on social media is more often than not just a section of the story it's not the whole thing and when we start to compare and when we start to look at uh, uh what other people have we run this uh um this path of jealousy we run down this path of jealousy that uh, is splitting um you know you can add to this list but these i think are the the greatest hits of ways in which to to disconnect from your community and one of them is jealousy the minute that we become jealous and that we're looking at uh, um, just one example of jealousy when we're looking at what other people have and what i don't have uh, we've already placed a, a, a barrier uh, um, and once we've placed that barrier uh, it's very hard to filter uh, outside of it, right? That we're filtering everything through that differences. In other words, when we look at differences, they become larger. Uh, when we look at similarities, those become larger. It's your choice, right? It's ultimately up to you to uh, choose how you want to look at the world and how you want to uh, 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 start to uh, um, compare. And again, again, compare isn't necessarily a, uh, if we compare what we have in common as opposed to compare what we have differently, uh, uh, you, you can really uh, get a good understanding of, uh, 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 of how the mind works. Uh, so what we, what we feed will grow. Uh, um, so let's find ways in which to feed those, the, uh, those aspects of community and our perception that uh, will help us grow. Uh, jealousy, not one of them. Okay, so lust. Lust, of course, we know, uh, um, you know, is, is, is a very, very strong desire. Um, it's not even just uh, around other people. It's just a very, almost an obsession, a lust, a, a, a sincere desire that's almost all encompassing and uh, very, very powerful, 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 powerful emotion. Uh, um, but it brings a person away from this world, meaning that uh, um, you're not really seeing reality. Uh, um, there's almost a, a, a fantasy in it, you know, that uh, uh, when you truly desire something so much that we create stories in our minds to allow us to continue with the obsession or allow us to continue with that strong, strong desire, right? And I think lust isn't necessarily just around... Uh, um, you know, other people that can be around, uh, at least what the way I look at it is, is that, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, the Hebrew uh, ta'ava is just a strong, strong, uh, almost a, 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 your, your will is out of control and you can have that around uh, just about anything. And when we become obsessed with something, you know, whether it's some silly video game or some, you know, diet or even, even uh, uh, um, you know, our computers or our phone, right? If you, I mean, think about it. Many of us are, have become obsessed with our phones and obsessed with uh, uh, communication, obsessed with emails, obsessed with the internet. And, and uh, again, inherently it's not bad, but when you get so pulled, right? I mean, think about it. If, uh, um, and I don't know who's on this uh, or who's ever listening to this at some point, but uh, could you put your phone down for one day? I'm just using that as an example. Could you put your phone down for one day and how, how much of a connection uh, uh, or loss of connection would you feel? And, uh, um, but you can easily see when we become so uh, um, invested in something like that, so obsessed with something like that, it does bring us out, out from reality, brings us out of this world. So that's the lust thing. Uh, what is a, such a strong desire, such a strong pull 
then it will pull us out of reality. Uh, um, and that's not even to talk about uh, addictions and, and other addictions. That's a whole other, a whole other thing. And and glory. Interestingly enough, glory. Uh, um, and uh, um, you know, glory is also there, there's almost an, an, a quality of arrogance around that, right? That uh, uh, um, me being seen as somebody. Uh, maybe who I am or who I am not, but me being seen in such a favorable way, uh, this will bring somebody out of the world. There's almost a, an ego around it that uh, uh, um, that that we want others to view us in a particular, obviously a favorable light, uh, but that you see me as, you know, whatever you fill in the blank, wise, smart, uh, um, athletic, uh, whatever you fill in the blank for you, but that, that there is a part of us that, that want to be, that, that wants to be perceived as something. Uh, um, and that brings us out of the world as well. So what part of me uh, wants to be uh, uh, perceived as something great or something wonderful? What I like to do is look at the, uh, the flip side of this too, is that what, what is he saying? What can bring you into the world? What are the three top or what will bring you out? He says jealousy and this lust and this glory. Um, and what is jealousy? What would be the opposite of jealousy? So, so we can flip it and see how that is that we can, uh, uh, um, you know, find ways in which to really make connection and to, to be a part of this world. And, and really, uh, for for everyone, it's not the same, right? The opposite of jealousy for everyone's not going to be the same. Uh, when we're talking about jealousy and that desiring what somebody else has, is that knowing knowing your place and knowing your own your own uh, uh, value and your own worth. Uh, um, that uh, uh, we learned earlier is is that he who is rich is is wanting basically uh, what it is that you already have. And and how I define jealousy was something like uh, me kind of comparing your outsides to, to, to my insides is that uh, really one way to uh, deal with jealousy is understand that every other human is uh, a human being as well. And once we understand that, that Selim Elohim, that we're all created in the image of God, uh, uh, that we all have our own uh, set of uh, 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 human characteristics, uh, then really what are we jealous? There's an old uh, 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 Yiddish proverb that says if everyone uh, you know, everyone took their problems and put them uh, in the center of the table. We'd all take our own problems. You know, it's just like we, we really don't know uh, uh, other people's situations. And so what are we really being jealous of? We're being jealous of our, our, our own perception of what we think that they have. Uh, um, so knowing what it is that we have and understanding uh, that we're all pretty much in the same boat, uh, um, you know, uh, um, so, and then uh, what about lust, that, that strong desire, uh, strong desire, um, that really, that big pull to something, that obsession, how do you deal with obsession? How do you deal with uh, um, this, this idea of lust? And uh, obsession is, is honestly, uh, the, the, the best way to deal with obsession is service. Uh, because when you're obsessing, you've, you've, you've made it all uh, about the individual. Um, and that's actually true for all of us, but uh, obsession is one of those things where uh, it's not about the, the item that you're obsessed with. It always comes back to somehow it's a, it's, it's a commentary on you, uh, you as the individual. Uh, what does this do for me? What is this and how is this going to enhance me? If I get this and I, and I uh, deal with this obsession, how does this help me? And so service is the other. Uh, and then glory, uh, arrogance. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the other side of uh, arrogance, of course, is humility, uh, being right-sized, being, being authentically who you are. And that takes an enormous amount of courage and an enormous amount of honesty to truly understand who, who you are as a human being. Uh, um, you know, we have our subconscious and our conscious that are working uh, for us, maybe against us, I don't know. But, uh, uh, um, you know, it, it, it actually helps us uh, um, on, some, on some level with this, this ego or with this humility, because at times if we, and, and the honesty to get to a true humility, because uh, um, at times we wouldn't be able to tolerate uh, the amount of honesty it takes to really truly become 
uh, humble. And, you know, I'll give you an example is just that the the ability for someone to be truly honest and, and, and humble and, and all of these great characteristics that we take, uh, um, you look back at your life, um, you know, you have a consciousness as you grow older that, you know, look, what you did in your 20s, there's no way that you, you know, maybe you kind of like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. It's not that you weren't a decent person then. It's just you had a, a, a different consciousness, a different level of uh, of understanding. And so on some level, uh, our, our subconscious or our conscious allows us to to be able to live that way uh, because there's no way we could tolerate the the honesty that it would take to have that at that point in time. Uh, so we are in uh, process. Process is the way to kind of look at it. You know, we are we are people that are uh, in a process. Oh, my gosh, we already went uh, 20 minutes, um, you know, Let's apply some of this to our, our day, find ways in which to connect, find ways in which to build bridges as opposed to bringing us out of this world. Uh, um, we are here. We are alive. We're able to live uh, and we have one day in front of us. So uh, it's up to you how you're going to you're going to live it. What are we adding to today and uh, what great, great ways uh, can we add to the world today? Have a wonderful day.